What is up, you guys? Pete DiCarlo here, and today we're going to talk about New Oriental Education and Technology Group. The ticker is EDU, and it is a company that I just started a long-term position in. Now, initially, my goal was to start this position really in a smaller E-Trade account, but today I actually pulled the trigger. I got about $5,000 worth of shares um, on my Robinhood account. So in most cases, I don't like to have that account have anything to do with long-term investing because I mainly just sell puts on that and my Thinkorswim account, and I try to keep long-term investments really to, to my E-Trade account. But with how much EDU is down in the past couple of days, I decided that I might as well just bite the bullet enter the position I wanted to get in and I figured that while I did that I'm going to make a full breakdown on what this company is what they do why I see value in it and overall where I think the stock's going to go within the next year or two now I am shooting this video on Thursday June 17th it's probably not coming out until Friday because I'm putting a Fubo video out today if you didn't watch that Fubo deep dive video go and check that out but if we take a look at EDU overall on a monthly chart, the stock has had a very, very strong trend upwards since its IPO. It IPO'd back in 2006, right around 46 cents a share, tapping out at highs of $20 a share. And right now we're trading right around $7.35. In most recent times of 2015, so really like the past six years, the stock has followed this very, very strong trend line. It usually has couple of years of really strong movements followed by about a 50 percent pullback pushed up very recently to highs of 20 dollars in march of 2021 and since then has significantly pulled back 63 percent to where it is right now i will start by saying that this stock is very volatile but overall i feel like technically we are at a great position and i feel that the fair value is right around 18 dollars, so we are trading significantly below it so for those of you who do not know edu was founded in 1993 and is the largest well-established one-stop shopping private educational service provider in china edu has over 52.8 million it's insane student enrollments including about 8.4 million room uh, enrollments in fiscal 2019 as of third quarter fiscal 2020 edu had a network of 1416 learning centers including 99 schools 12 bookstores and access to a national network of online and offline bookstores through 160 third-party distributors and over 38,400 highly qualified teachers in 86 cities so Overall, one thing you'll notice is that EDUs is massive. It's not like this is a small learning center online or offline. Like this is a massive corporation. And we'll talk about that a little bit more once we actually get into the market cap. So overall, EDU offers diversified portfolio of education programs, services, and products to students in different age groups, including kindergarten all the way to 12th grade and even after school to, or after school tutoring for major academic subjects, overseas and domestic test preparations, non-academic languages and services in vocational training and so on so basically it is a learning center that does a lot more than just tutoring online so overall there's 81,000 employees its most recent earnings came out in february of 2021 and it's obviously it is located in china so you can see here that overall morningstar gives us a five-star rating uh i do agree they believe that a five-star price so the way that basically morningstar does this and i don't really like to use a lot of these companies like you see i use morningstar sometimes i use simply wall street but i never pay attention to what valuations are uh because at the end of the day like they're just talking heads analysts are just here so that you buy their product so that you read what they're doing kind of essentially what you know uh i don't really want to say what what cnbc does but it's the same thing like create a lot of chatter create a lot of noise get a lot of people to pay attention to what you're doing and then they can put ads all over the place and uh you know make a buck off of it sort of like youtube right ironically um but overall um i do agree i, I think that this is a very very good investment they have a fair value of like 20 bucks i think fair value really is about 17 dollars at 17 dollars is probably where i would sell half of my position right now but overall i see a bright future for this company um and let's get into now some of the key metrics so if we take a look right now let me go to quote here we are they have a 12 billion dollar market cap so a 12 million or billion dollar market cap is by no means a small 
company, right? You have usually anything under $1 billion, in my opinion, is a smaller company. If your market cap's like only $100 million, then you are a very, very small company. So you can see that right now, the stock is at the lower end of its 52 week range. So lows within the past 52 weeks is $7.36. Cents and we are trading at highs of $19.97. They currently have a price to sales ratio of $3.52. They have no forward dividend, obviously. They don't pay a dividend. And the consensus forward PE is 21.88. Anything below like a, a 25, in my opinion, is a very, 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 very good deal. Anything below like a 30 is pretty fair, in my opinion, really depending as well um, on the, uh, the overall you know, a sector that it's in, like you have a lot of tech companies where they're just they're they have astronomical PE ratios. So overall, really good, in my opinion, from a value standpoint. Now, let's take a quick look at the financials and then we'll look a little bit deeper into the company. So if we take a look at the financials right now on the income statement, one thing that I like to see if you saw with the Fubo video is I really like to see revenue grow so you can see that from 2018 to 2019 we have a great revenue growth from 2019 to 2020 great revenue growth and in the past trailing 12 months we've had great revenue growth as well so overall the three-year trend has been nothing but up same with operating income uh and net income as well has been going up so the other thing too is operating income went up from 2018 to 2019, as well as from 2019 to 2020, and then actually went down in the past trailing 12 months. Um, however, we did have a pandemic in the past 12 months. So that also has a lot to do with it. Now, balance sheet. Um, as well, you know, I like to see total assets continue to grow year over year. So if you look at 2018 to 2019 to 2020, to the past trailing 12 months, our total assets in this company has done nothing but go straight up, which is a very, very strong sign. And the other thing, too, is that the total liabilities, unfortunately, have gone up as well. However, they have not really gone up as much as the total assets. Like, the perfect thing that you would want is revenue to grow operating income to grow, total assets to grow, but total liabilities to go down. In this case, we're not seeing that, but it's still not something that I'm extremely worried about, especially, like I said, with the P word happening in the past 12 months, um, you know, really past 16 months to bring on more liabilities, especially a learning center, even though it's, you know, a, a, or an online learning center. Still, I wouldn't be surprised that they're going to have higher liabilities this year over last year but with the total assets growing and total you know operating income growing overall their financials do look pretty good in my opinion they're definitely not benjamin graham you know uh you know quintessential warren buffett numbers but still really good so business strategy and outlook of this company edu is a large-scale leading provider of private tutoring in china they offer a diversified portfolio of educational programs I already talked about that um and overall the key tenant of EDU strategy is to improve operational efficiency in the near term. They believe that EDU will continue to open new learning centers each year. EDU is guided at 20 to 25 percent year over year per growth for its learning center capacity for the next three years. And they believe that offline classes should gradually open up as the impact of the C word gradually fades. Also, EDU will continue to close down underperforming centers, which also implies improving operating efficiency. So obviously, if they have under improved you know centers just like any business cut the cord get rid of it start opening new learning centers um, in areas that make sense and that are going to allow the company to grow edu is aiming to raise its students retention rate from 65 to 63 percent in its fiscal year of 2021 it also plans to continue to raise the summer promotions asp as no longer offering tuition discounts as offline classes are expected to resume in addition edu will also offer their online merge offline or omo classes to their students with combination of taking offline and online classes together with the same class and the same teacher in the longer term we expect edu to continue to benefit from industry consolidation and gain market share due to its leading position in china private after school education market and also through strong organic growth economic moat so if you guys don't know what economic moat is it's essentially like 
what is your place in the market could you easily be copied could you easily be outpriced really what stands out as you being different from everybody else and can you come in and just have somebody steal something like let's say you're a uh i don't have one but like a pop socket man actually it's a great example say you make tops for a living that's your business and you make these tops is your economic moat going to be good or bad? Obviously bad because anybody can just make a mold of your top and make it cheaper than you and make it probably spin better, even though this is a really nice top. <laughs> um, but somebody can come in and basically just steal market share by undercutting you and stealing your intellectual property. So we assign EDU with a uh, narrow moat rating due to its intangible assets with strong brand reputation. Also, EDU is one of the very few providers able to charge its students a 20 to 30% price premium over the majority of its peers as leading after-school tutoring operating in China with favorable government policies. All right, we're going to talk about the C word a little bit, and it has a lot to do with China, and that is communism. So Chinese companies are a lot different um, than, you know, American companies. Their government backs their companies a lot better, yet there are a lot of downsides to that because it's communism. Like, let's be honest here. I know a lot of people are going to comment down below, like, aren't you afraid to invest in a Chinese company if this company ever gets delisted? Uh, and yeah, like, of course I am, right? There's there's always going to be risk in any investment. And there's definitely going to be a lot of risk with this one specifically because the nature of the beast and also because it, it's, you know, a company that's ran in China. But for me, I'm only putting five grand in. So if that money goes 100% to zero it's no skin off my back at the end of the day um but yeah so favorable government policy support edu has a moat in offline leveraging its strong brand in china that allows it to ramp up faster its learning center establishments and student recruitment uh, after school education in china remains at large with a highly fragmented market in which the top 10 players in aggregate account for less than 10 percent of the total market share um, in 2018 the number of students in k-12 through has exceeded 174 million surging demand for after school tutoring has fueled a thriving market so obviously you know, more population in China is getting higher and higher. The demand for after school and for tutoring in general is getting higher and higher. Um, you know, a really good thing too, like we said before, is that the government backs them. They're a staple name. So they are, you know, when it comes to like after school education, it's kind of like, like a Sylvan learning or like a Czech type situation in America where a lot of people know this company. So therefore it has a great brand reputation. Uh, in addition, we believe that dominant players such as EDU will continue to gain market share due to its scale and teacher quality with standardized facilities in teaching materials. In 2019, EDU's online market share was just 2%. Despite EDU's online market share remaining small, we believe that EDU is still in its early stage of profit. Upcycling for more online business can give the the online education system that it's not yet mainstream under its current environment yet we believe that post covid impact i hope i can say that word without getting demonetized um, online education will continue to attract more and more students from mass market especially from two-tier cities or below low tutoring penetration um key intangible assets of edu so we believe barriers and including scales to enter china's k through two after school tutoring sector include establishing a brand reputation and premium pricing so the biggest things that you can see through here is premium pricing quality teaching and big scale so at the end household name so at the end of the day it's not like this is a small scale you know uh, setup that what edu has this is a premium product for students who want great teaching and tutoring after school k through 12. so that's the really big thing here we believe that edu possesses strong brand reputation once again and has established the means and scale to manage its teaching resources and curriculum well um, Chinese sector is highly influenced by government policy. See those keywords once again. Given any tightened governmental regulations may impact the share price performance and the whole education sector. Uh, fair value and profit drivers, we won't go over that. Uh, risk uncertainty, we rate EDU's uncertainty as high. I agree. Given that China's after school tutoring market is highly fragmented. We believe the following can be highlighted as potential risks due to highly fragmental market and intensified competition, which may result in one, lower than expected student enrollment rates, 
Two, lower than expected tuition rate adjustments. Three, higher than expected teacher costs for online education. Four, overseas test preps may be affected as COVID-19 impacts the overseas and has not yet been brought under control and is resuming the overseas normal operations. Time may take longer than expected. So overall, I completely agree with all those things. Teachers might need to be paid more they might go somewhere else. They might have lower than expected student enrollments. That just might be a part of things. And on top of that too, um, higher than expected teaching costs. We already said that and rate adjustments. Um, overall, I really like this company. I think that when we just break down the major assets versus major liabilities, major assets is that they are a premium brand. This company is scaling really well. The debt to income is very, very strong, even though it still is highly speculative because they are raising a ton of liabilities and a ton of debt. They're still doing really well. If, if the debt to liabilities was like equal, I would be very worried. But in this case, they do have a lot of room to grow. They could pay all the debt off pretty much instantly and still have cash left over. I think that the biggest downside is, you know, COVID, which it doesn't seem like we're going to get a second wave. But if something like that happened, we could see a major issue. And I think that overall, this is a very strong investment. If you're somebody who is down to risk a little bit more capital, put a little bit more risk on the table, but looking for a higher potential return, right? Because if this stock were just to get back up to where it was a couple of months ago, you're looking at a 150% return, um, you know, which is very hard to get at a lot of other companies. Um, and, you know, you're looking at stock falling to major support from here, about a 31% loss. So overall, guys, let me know what you think. Let me know if you're taking a position. Let me know if you're going to be putting this on your watch list. Thank you guys for all of the support. Hit the like button, subscribe. If you want to get access to every single trade that I take live, as soon as I take it, live shoot me and my team every morning for the first hour of market open. Get access to our 60-hour course library as well as our private stock market discord. Use the link down below. Start for 10 bucks your first month. Thank you for all the support. See you guys Monday.